Hello. Um, this is a video in response to Family Disowns Daughter um, from 2020. And I just think it would be good to share a biblical perspective to compare some of the views that um, Westboro Baptist Church has. And um, I've selected some verses that I think apply here. The first one is Luke 15:20, where it says, And he arose and came to his father. But when he was yet a great way off, his father saw him and had compassion and ran and fell on his neck and kissed him. And I think that shows the attitude that we should have that when our children are away from us, how our emotions should be when they come back and that they should reflect how God's emotions are when we come back. Or rather, they do reflect what God's emotions are when we come back to him. And he should be our example. The next verse is Jeremiah 9.1. It says, Oh, that my head were waters, and my eyes a fountain of tears, that I might weep day and night for the slain of the daughter of my people. I think this has application in the area of our troops that are dying overseas and um, that we should be like Jeremiah and be willing to weep for the fallen of our people. I don't believe this um, is uh, conduce conducive to um, the way that uh, Westboro, Westboro Baptist Church is saying to pray for more ditch soldiers, but rather that they should weep for the soldiers that have died. And um, certainly not to have pleasure in more dying. In Ezekiel 33, 11, it says, Say unto them, As I live, saith the Lord God, I have no pleasure in the death of the wicked, but that the wicked turn from his ways and live. Turn ye from your evil ways, for why will you die, O house of Israel? Um, in response to the uh, way Westboro Baptist Church talks to the soldiers it's hard to believe that they would know the personal history of any individual soldier and would be in danger of breaking one of the Ten Commandments which is thou shall not bear false witness the next verse is 1st Timothy Chapter 2, verses 1 through 4. I exhort that first of all supplications, prayers, intercession, and giving of thanks be made for all men, for kings, and for all that are in authority, that we may lead a quiet and peaceful life in all godliness and honesty. For this is good and acceptable in the sight of God our Savior, who will have all men to be saved and to come unto the knowledge of the truth. And we, like God, should have a desire to see all men saved and to come to the knowledge of the truth. We should pray for our, even for our enemies and for those who are against God. A thing that I've noticed in these pickets is that the gospel is not being preached. Um... Romans 10.15 says, How beautiful are the feet of them that preach the gospel of peace and bring glad tidings of good things. I hear a lot about the judgment of God, a lot about hell, but where is the hope of the gospel? Where are the glad tidings of the good things? Um, Christians have... Uh, great message to tell and we should take advantage of that and as James 318 
which says, the fruit of righteousness is sown in peace of them that make peace. And that's more about the attitude of how we're supposed to proclaim the message that we have, which is in peace. And along that same line, Second Timothy 2.24 says, The servant of the Lord must not strive, but be gentle unto all men, apt to teach, patient, in meekness, instructing those that oppose themselves. If God peradventure will give them repentance to the acknowledging of the truth, and that they may recover themselves out of the snare of the devil, or are taken captive by him at his will. And along the same lines, Colossians 4, 6, Let your speech be always with grace, seasoned with salt, that you may know how you ought to answer every man. It has to be seasoned with salt. No one's going to just eat a big old mouthful of salt. Another thing is um, to remember your own sins. And I believe Romans 5, 6 to 10 reminds us of that. Where it says, Thou for, I'm sorry, Therefore thou art inexcusable, O man, whosoever thou art that judgest. For wherein thou judgest another that condemneth thyself, for thou that judgest doest the same things. But we are sure that the judgment of God is according to truth against them which commit such things. And thinkest thou this, O man, that judgest them which do such things, and does the same, that thou shalt escape the judgment of God, or despisest thou the riches of his goodness and forbearance and long suffering, not knowing that the goodness of God leadeth thee to repentance? But after thy hardness and impotent heart treasure is up unto thyself, wrath against the day of wrath, and revelation of the righteous judgment of God, who will render to every man according to his deeds. And um, as far as whether God hates people who are in their sins, I believe he doesn't, and we need to remember, if for the Christians out there, we need to remember that Christ loved us in our sins, and if he didn't, then we wouldn't be saved ourselves. I believe Romans 5, 6 through 10 reflects that, where it says, For one we were yet without strength, in due time, Christ died for the ungodly. For scarcely for a righteous man will one die, yet for adventure for a good man some would even dare to die. But God commendeth his love toward us, and that while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. Much more than being now justified by his blood, we shall be saved from wrath through him. For if when we were enemies who were reconciled to God by the death of his Son, much more being reconciled, we both shall be saved by his life. And that's also the gospel, I think, that should be being preached more. Jesus said, Go ye into all the world and preach the gospel unto every living creature. That's what I want to see. Thanks.